Coming up, Cessna starts making Avgas powered 182s again. Flying over Dubai with Jetman. Plus, a landing shorter than you can imagine and flying over our nation's capital with 50 plus warbirds. And Tora Workshop, where they rebuild P 51 Mustangs. The OK Live this week begins in just a moment. From your first skyward glance, the dream of flight compelled you. And from your first glimpse of a Cirrus, you realized that dream had a name. Cirrus Aircraft. Go where you've never been before. It's a great big thank you to the greatest generation, and we take you along for the ride. Thanks for choosing AOPA Live this week. I'm Melissa Rudinger. And I'm Tom Haynes. So glad you're with us. The arsenal of democracy is an historic flyover to mark 70 years since VE Day, and our cameras were there. It's a once-in-a-lifetime sight. Over 50 World War II airplanes flying over the mall in Washington, D.C. The arsenal of democracy flyover is a reminder of the sacrifices made during World War II. The flight marks the 70th anniversary of VE Day. Thousands watch as wave after wave of airplanes come down the Potomac and right down Independence Avenue past the Washington Monument. There's a lot of work to put together as the airplanes are flying through some of the most restricted airspace in the world. Air show announcer Rob Ryder explains how each airplane flying overhead played a role in the war effort. From Elbird trainers to heavier hardware, they're all included. Outfitted with 1350 caliber machine guns in eight different locations on the plane, the 10 member crews of the B 17 flew this aircraft, earning the nickname Flying Fortress. But as it often is, the story isn't about the airplanes. It's about honoring the greatest generation who, 70 years ago, used this arsenal to answer the call of freedom. People like Robert Stacy. It's been seven decades since he flew on a B-24, but he remembers it like it was yesterday. We went in, went in around the island, came in out of radar, dropped bombs, and as we go out, no anti-aircraft, no flight, of, but a black wall of ammunition. And I said, last mission, I'm going through a black wall, no way I could get home. How far do? As I said it, the black wall dissipated. <coughs> Thank you, sir. <laughs> and it's a somber reminder of World War II's legacy. B-29 Super Fortress Fifi roars overhead, her radial rumble echoing off the monument she preserved. And a missing man formation to remember the real cost of standing here today. lifetime opportunity and very inspiring. So there's big news out of Wichita after months of delays trying to bring a diesel 182JT-A to market, Cessna is selling 182s that burn avgas. The Civil Air Patrol ordered 17 Cessna 182T aircraft last month, marking the, the re first return of the gasoline-powered Skylane. Cessna confirmed that the Lycoming-powered 182S will be available starting the second half of the year. No official word yet as to what that may mean for the diesel 182. And we're getting a snapshot of the industry. The General Aviation Manufacturers Association first quarter numbers are out, and they don't look so good, especially for piston aircraft. That segment is down almost 20% compared to the same period last year. Meanwhile, business jets also took a bit of a hit. And one new business jet is celebrating a first flight this week, though. The Pilatus PC-24 made its first flight in the skies over Switzerland. The PC-24 is designed to operate out of paved or unpaved strips, delivery expected in 2017. Now a new name in the jet market, Technum announced that they are evaluating the potential of the P-Jet. It's a two-seat jet, side-by-side, -side, single turbofan. The company thinks it would work well as a military trainer or a personal jet. And some remarkable footage from Dubai. Jetman Yves Rossi and his protege Jetman Vince Raffet are soaring around the city in this new video. You may remember the Jetman was the star attraction at AirVenture 2013. 
He used small jet engines on a semi-rigid wingsuit to propel himself, and it's a simply amazing video. Coming up after the break, rebuilding P-51 Mustangs in Salinas and a landing you just have to see to believe. Plus, we will tell you about the changes coming to Duat. You are watching AOP Live this week. It's been called the most sophisticated single engine airplane ever. But to the people whose loved ones are alive today, it's called a lifesaver. The Cirrus Airframe Parachute System, only from Cirrus Aircraft. Welcome back. You're watching AOPA Live this week. Big news from the FAA. The FAA has announced that it has awarded a new five-year DUAT contract to Lockheed Martin and CSC. As you may know, DUAT is the FAA's flight planning program that allows pilots to use the internet to access weather and flight planning information and to file and cancel flight plans. Lockheed Martin already has the FAA's flight service program to provide non-DUAT services in the contiguous United States, Hawaii, and Puerto Rico. And in 2012, Lockheed launched its own web briefing services as a part of its flight service portfolio, so ramping up to provide the online DUAT services should go smoothly. The DUAT program was first implemented in 1989, and since that time, the services have been provided by CSC and DTC. The FAA rebids the program every few years, and this new contract marks the first time that DTC will not have a role in providing DUAT services. Now, Melissa, you've been covering the DUAT situation for AOPA for many, many years, practically since the beginning. What does this mean for pilots? So we don't know yet, uh, but what we do know is that if you're a DTC user, you're going to have to switch. Uh, we do expect that DTC is going to continue to provide services for the next 60 days to allow for a smooth transition. Uh, and we'll keep you posted on what, what's coming. This is the first step in the FAA's effort to modernize flight services in the coming years. The Lockheed Martin contract to supply flight services other than DUAT is set to expire in September, although the FAA has said publicly that it intends to extend the contract for a while while it develops criteria for a modernized system. All right, so how many years do you suppose you have, how many meetings do you suppose you've been in DUAT uh, over the years? countless meetings uh, and our goal has always been to, to not only preserve the service which has been under threat of cut from time to time but to make sure that it's robust and meets our needs. Great okay well as we showed you earlier the arsenal of democracy was pretty impressive getting 56 World War II airplanes permission to fly through DC is an enormous undertaking planning for the historic arsenal of democracy flight took years and required dozens of organizations and federal agencies to work together took a lot of effort but the neat thing was that you know when when we all got all our friends together and all the associations to support uh, the federal entities that we needed to deal with were just all for it everybody was just centrally focused on let's honor the veterans coordinating the logistics between planes was also a challenge the best air boss in the business was brought in to help coordinate Wayne Boggs was based at Potomac Tracon managing the 15 waves of aircraft to get the timing right, heavy bombers took off from Manassas while fighters and smaller aircraft left from Culpeper, Virginia. All the planning paid off and the flyover was an unforgettable event. Meanwhile, our first fly-in of the year is in Salinas, California this weekend. Visitors to Salinas will get to see what makes the Salinas Airport unique. AOPA Live's Josh Cochran introduces a family business known for restoring P-51 Mustangs. The Teeters family has a long history of flying and restoring airplanes. They started Cal Pacific Air Motive in Salinas, California nearly 40 years ago. Art Teeters started the company working on general aviation airplanes. He ended up working on P-51s after one got damaged in a taxiing accident. So at first he declined the job and about a year later, the aircraft showed up at the hangar door, and um, Dad was so honored that somebody decided to send it anyway that he went on ahead and restored it. And that first restoration changed the course of the business. Demand grew for P-51s, increasing the Teeters Mustang business. It took about 15 to 20 years to prove to us that there were enough P-51s in the world to be restored to make it a full-time business. Cal Pacific Air Motive is unique because it holds the type certificate for P-51C, D, and K models. 
With that type certificate, we were able to apply for production approval. Visitors at the Salinas Fly-In will be able to get tours of Cal Pacific. And we'll explain the restoration project, how the planes come to us, most of them come in crates or on a trailer. We do not get any fly-ins. And from that point, we remove every rivet from every structure. We inspect it. We do hidden damage inspection. And anything that needs to be made new and replaced, we'll make new and replace it. Or we can restore and refurbish the original parts. So during the tour, we'll show them the process that it takes, some of the tooling, our jig fixtures. We do restore everything and rebuild it in a jig fixture to assure proper alignment. Mustang restoration takes a long time, and each project is unique. Restorations take on a life of their own. Everyone is different depending on the customer's needs. Um, you know, we like to say three to five years, but inevitably work will get added. The Teeter's work is just as much about the customers as it is the airplanes. What we really like is the people that we get to work with. We've been able to work with World War II aces and some pretty incredible private collectors over the years. The Teeters love bringing these historic aircraft back to their World War II condition. The airplanes they restore act as a reminder of the legacy of the P-51 Mustang. So when you get an aircraft that you've literally removed all the hardware, every rivet, every piece came apart, then it comes back together and you take it out on the taxiway and you go out and you do a test flight. It's, it's a really good feeling. Josh Cochran, AOPA Live. Wow, what a remarkable business. Thanks, Josh. If you are planning to come to the fly-in, don't forget to check the website listed on your screen. There you can RSVP and download the pilot information packet. Well, it's the longest leg in the journey. Solar Impulse 2 is preparing to take off from China, headed to Hawaii as we tape this broadcast. The leg is expected to take five days. Pilot Andre Borschberg will spend 120 hours in the air. Talk about a long cross country. The Air Safety Institute has a new real pilot story out. It tells the story of a family who crashed in the mountains of Idaho during bad weather. I knew we were going to stall and I had enough time to tell my wife and daughter, I'm sorry, I don't think we're going to make it. Um, told them I loved them and I put the nose of the plane down into the canyon to try and keep flying the aircraft. Wait, Kenny 911, what is your emergency? Hi, I, I'm in an airplane and I crash when I'm in the mountain. You can hear the full story at the airsafetyinstitute.org. If you're headed to the Bahamas anytime soon, listen up. One of the more popular GA airports there is closed. Staniel Key Airport is used to access the Staniel Key Yacht Club and other sites in the area. And while Staniel Key is not an airport of entry, it is a popular destination in the Exuma chain and one of the few Bahamas airports that has, been, has seen an increase in private aircraft use in the recent years. The Bahamian government said the runway will be closed for repairs for six to eight weeks. However, as we tape this, no equipment was on site at the airfield yet. And now from the warm tropics to the cold of Alaska, and you got to see this video to believe it. This is Bobby Breeden competing in the Valdez Stoll Competition. His customized Glacier Cub airplane helped get him off the ground and back down in a short enough distance to win for the fourth year in a row. Look for a story on Bobby and his awesome airplane at a, in a future edition of the show. Now, Melissa, my bonanza could never make a landing like that, but you in a balloon, you could come pretty close to uh, that. We'd be pretty competitive, but yeah, I don't know that they'd let us enter. That's right. <laughs> Well, that's going to do it for us this week. Thanks for joining us. We will see you back here again next Thursday for another edition of AOPA Live This Week. <music> <music>